Now, the average temperature of the world's oceans is at its highest since records began. It's believed to be rising faster than at any time in at least 2,000 years. This has serious implications, not least for the world's coral reefs. Marine scientists are warning a mass bleaching of coral could be unfolding right now in the southern hemisphere, perhaps the worst in the planet's history. Now, according to the EU's Copernicus Climate Change Service, the average global sea surface temperature has exceeded the previous record of 20.98 degrees Celsius, now standing at 21.06 degrees. Doesn't sound like much of an increase, does it? But, in fact, this is way off the charts of what's normal, and it matters because it threatens fish stocks while ramping up hurricanes and speeding up the collapse of the polar ice sheets. Scientists stress healthy oceans are critical to our life on Earth. They feed us, they regulate our climate, and generate most of the oxygen that we breathe. They also provide more than three billion jobs globally. Well, we can speak to Carla Buantempo, who's director of Copernicus Climate Change Service, joins us live now from Brussels. Uh, you uh, compiled the report at Copernicus, and oceans clearly hotter now than ever. It's an ocean heat wave, no less. Why is this happening? Well, there are a number of reasons why this is happening. And certainly the fact that over the last few months, we have been through El Nino phase. So this is the warm phase of the El Nino Southern Oscillation, which typically modulate the temperature of the tropical ocean, uh, Pacific Ocean. But what is remarkable of these extremes you were talking about is that the anomaly in the surface of the ocean temperature is not limited to the Pacific. Actually, now that El Nino is going back and is going towards neutral condition is really what's happening in the, in the Atlantic, North Atlantic, South Atlantic, and to some extent the Indian Ocean that is quite significant. In most places, especially in the Atlantic, we are at record-breaking temperature. We have never seen temperatures so high in the basin. And as you, you were saying in your introduction, this is having a number of consequences for the ocean itself. Yeah, I was going to say, of, because the oceans are sucking up all this heat and it must create the effect of, you know, ramping up hurricanes and so forth and the impacts on ice sheets, sea level rise. Uh, the impacts are many and various, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, to pick one of the, of, the, of the list of impacts you were mentioning, certainly we do know that the higher temperature in the ocean are one of the ingredients fueling more intense storm. And this is one of the reasons we see that the intensity of the most intense precipitation is, is in the summary for policymaker in the last assessment report of the IPCC. The intensity of the most intense precipitation is going up and is not just a prediction in our climate model, it's really an observation that we see on all, all over the, the continent. So um, El Nino played a role. Uh, what we are seeing in the Atlantic is not directly related to El Nino. The uh, peak emission, the peak uh, uh, incoming radiation from the sun is another um, effect that piles up on, on, on others, but fundamentally we wouldn't be able to see what we are seeing now, what we are observing now, had not been for the increase in the, in the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So we are record high in terms of uh, CO2, in terms of methane emission, and this adds up. We do know that the climate system responds to the concentration of greenhouse gases, and this is fundamental to explain the record-breaking temperature that we have seen, not just in the ocean, but in the entire climate system. So February Indeed, was the warmest February. Record. That's right, the warmest February, which is a part of a long streak of records in recent months. Uh, and the impacts, as I say, as far as the ocean is concerned, uh, not just uh, physical, but it's just the marine life, which means that uh, are impacted, which means that fish stocks are hit, which is fundamental for, for human life, really, in terms of food and for jobs. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, temperature is uh, one of the key components in defining the uh, biological niches where many ecosystems live. And the increasing global mean temperature means the modification of, this, uh, of these niches and the propagation or the extension of others. But fundamentally, this is having already an impact on, uh, on, uh, on coral, is having an impact on uh, fish stock. Uh, so uh, fundamental, what, what's happening in the ocean for me is one specific instance of a more general shift. So the climate that we are experiencing today and the evolution of the sea surface temperature, I think, is a good example of it. It's a climate we have not experienced ever in our lifetime. Mm. Any person alive today on the planet has never lived through an ocean this warm. But more importantly, our civilization has never had to cope with an with a ocean so warm, an atmosphere so warm. So we are truly in uncharted territory. Okay, one, one very quick but, question. Uh, bottom line, 
does stopping burning fossil fuels, does that prevent this? Does it reverse it? How quickly can we recover? Well, it's not, um, there is, especially for the ocean, it's not, there is no quick fix because the amount of energy, we know 90% of the extra energy gets into the ocean. So the, the inertia in the system is huge. But if we act now, we can certainly change the trajectory and have a massive impact for the generation to All come. Right. Uh, Carlo Buentempo, thanks for explaining that so clearly. It's uh, great to have you with us. Thanks very much indeed, Carlo Buentempo from Copernicus Climate Change Service. Thank you. Thank you.